Andy Rouse having won the first two rounds in Class A and Frank Sittner there going well in the opening two rounds in the new and very competitive two-litre class. Unluckiest man so far is Rob Gravitt. Last corner of the last round at Donington and the Trackstar team down on finance are down on their luck as well. Rob Gravitt is an agonised spectator as his co-driver Stig Blomquist throws away certain victory with just 100 yards to go. The win goes once again to Andy Rouse and the success that might have attracted that desperately needed sponsor goes begging. For round three at Thruxton, the car would remain virgin white. Mike Smith stood down for reasons of finance and Rob Gravitt's thoughts were on saving money even while claiming pole position. Well, evening qualifying just now, we are running the car for the least amount of laps that we have to. You probably noticed I sat in the pits, I went out early, did four laps, put the car on pole and then sat and just looked at the, looked at the computer just, you know, to see what the times were, were like. Uh, we, if I had to go out, I would have gone out, but every lap costs money, so I'm trying to keep the life of the car down as much as I can. I mean, it's not the best way to go racing, but at this stage, it's the only thing we can do because it means that if I can extend the race time on, with the car, then that's what it's all about. I would even prefer to start, start lower down the field, you know, and, and leave the car good for the race. But it's obviously better to start from pole, of course. Another feature of the Donington round, a superb battle in the new two-litre class, Vauxhall against BMW. John Cleland showing Frank Sittner that the Cavalier is right on the very hectic pace. It was a four-car days for 13 laps. Um, it was clean. It wasn't like last year at all. There was no touching and pushing. And I have to say that there were a couple of occasions where Frank could very easily have given me a nudge. I was having to go through the slow corners much slower than he wanted to, uh, although I was going through the fast corners much quicker than he could. So I, we had words afterwards, and I said it was great you know, that he didn't touch me because we bought a lot of body panels this year just in case it was <laughs> going to be a bit like last year. But upsetting the two-litre balance of power is the arrival of Jeff Allen, the former touring car stalwart who's planted his newly delivered, privately entered BMW ahead of the works cars on a very interesting grid. Rob Gravitt on pole alongside Andy Rouse, Gravitt's Yokohama tyres probably providing the advantage. Second row, Tim Harvey, carrying two of our onboard cameras, and the hard-charging Mike Newman. Lawrence Bristow, Sean Walker on row three. Graham Hathaway on row four in the ex-Mike Smith car. Cleland, looking for his first win, headed the two-litre class runners, with Jeff Allen proudly ahead of the rest of the BMWs, including Frank Sittner and junior team member Kurt Luby. A very big bank holiday crowd at the Thruxton circuit, round three of the SO British Touring Car Championship, commentator Murray Walker. There's a lot of worried men on the starting grid because the combination of fierce horsepower, Thruxton's abrasive surface and a really hot day is going to cause massive tyre wear. But it's a terrific start for Rob Kravitz Ford Sierra with Tim Harvey right behind him and Jeff Allen stalled his BMW. What a start! Looking back from Rob Gravitt's lead car, Tim Harvey and Andy Rouse chasing us. Campbell Corner, it's Gravitt, Harvey, Rouse, Newman, Hathaway, Bristow and Walker. Out of the complex, Gravitt, Harvey, Rouse, Mike Newman almost off. He tucks in again, it's Hathaway, Newman, Bristow. In car with Jerry Marney, Cleland on the left. Graham Good in the Black Sierra, blast past Kurt Luby and Frank Sittner, and there goes Cleland. It's Fast and Furious behind the leaders, and they're coming round to Goodwood Corner. It's Gravit, Harvey, Rouse on three different tyres. Yokohama, Dunlop, Pirelli. This is going to be interesting. In car with the championship leader, Andy Rouse, out of village at 125 miles an hour. Down to Brooklands, building up to 155 miles an hour. Out of Brooklands, down to Club Chicane, second gear, 70 miles an hour. Gravit in the white Sierra, then Harvey in the blue one. We're with Tim Harvey, the man who's rapidly becoming one of Britain's top drivers. He beat Andy Rouse at Macau last year. And here are the BMWs in the two-litre class with Cleland, Sittner, Luby, Cleland, Marnie. We're with Marnie, Luby ahead. So John Cleland has moved up to second in the two-litre class behind Frank Sittner. 
into another lap. Round Allard, fourth gear, 100 miles an hour, up to the sweeping left-hander, fifth gear, 125 miles an hour. There go the Sierras, here come the BMWs, and Cleland's Vauxhall, Sitna, and Cleland in car again. It's the BMW junior team driver, Kurt Luby, ahead, and Cleland is chasing Sitna in front of him. Out of the complex, there go the top ten. And multiple British Rally champion Scotsman Jimmy McRae is out of the race. And the 1989 British Touring Car champion John Cleland in the Vauxhall is attacking the 1988 champion Frank Sittner's BMW. And Cleland is all over the BMW's boot lid as they come out of Brooklands, down to the chicane, the fastest part of the course. Cleland is trying, he's dodging to the left, he's going to try and get past Sidner before they reach Club Chicane. He's not going to do it. sidner has got the inside line, and Cleland's in trouble. He tucks in between the two BMWs right up on the curb. That was a very close thing for John Cleland. He completes the lap. They go into Allard, fourth gear, 100 miles an hour up to Campbell, and when they get to Campbell, it's slotting back into second gear. This is only Cleland's third race in the front-wheel drive Vauxhall Cavalier, but he is really flying. Well over 300 horsepower from its two-litre engine. The Vauxhall dealer sport team have got it right. And behind Kurt Luby, it's Jerry Marnie, Nick Baird, Ian Forrest, and Jeff Allen, up from his appalling start. Goodwood corner and Cleland is attacking. He's attacking Frank Sittner. He's going to go through on the inside. Is he? Can, can Sittner hold him off? No is the answer. And John Cleland leads the two-litre class in the Vauxhall Cavalier. At the chicane, it's Gravit, Harvey and Rouse in car with Harvey. Chasing Gravit but not gaining. Two seconds behind the leader. 29-year-old Tim Harvey from Burford looks relaxed, but Rob Gravit has clearly got a grip on the race. And the chicane is the BMW Brigade, and Jeff Allen is recovering superbly. He's right up behind Jerry Marnie. Team owner Vic Lee watching his man. There you go Baird, Marnie, Jeff Allen up to 12th place in the white and turquoise car. At the chicane, Gravit is increasing his lead. And that's good news for the team's other driver, Mike Smith there, who's had to stand down for lack of funds. Operating the stopwatch this time, watches his man go through to complete the lap. Into the chicane, it's Bristow 5th, Newman 6th, Goode 7th and Walker 8th. And through they all go to complete another lap, into a new one. And in car with Jerry Marney, the BMWs are still fighting it out. Ian Forrest passes him, and Jeff Allen going through on the inside. The chicane, Baird, Forrest, Allen, Marney, Hall. That is 11th to 15th places. And they're so close, any of those places could change at any time. Just look at it. And at the complex, 1989, British champion John Cleland is leading the two-litre race, easing his Cavalier away from Frank Sidner and Kurt Luby. And then, there they are, Baird, Forrest and Allen, virtually together. At the chicane, still up front, Gravit, Harvey, Andy Rouse dropping back, first, second and third, Goodwood, the two-litres, Nick Baird, Forrest and Allen. And Alum is challenging, going through on the inside, taking Ian Forrest, closing up on Nick Baird. Now, Jeff is in the ex-Italian Bugatti team BMW, and it's the only car in his class on Yokohama tyres, just like Rob Gravitt. In car with Jerry Marney, ahead, Forrest, Alum and Baird. Down to the chicane, he's closing on Forrest. The BMW getting closer and Forrest goes up on the kerb. Marnie goes through, he's touching Forrest. And Forrest spins, Forrest spins out. That's the 10 times Scottish champion, Ian Forrest. Well, it looks as though his race at Thruxton is effectively finished. He's going to rejoin the race, but well down. He gets away, back into the race, gets up to racing speed. A meantime, in car with Jerry Marnie, and Godfrey Hall has gone ahead of Jerry Marnie. Jerry, Je 
Jerry's got a problem. He's fishing for gears. Oh, a gesture of despair. There's nothing to come from the transmission department. Jerry Marnie has obviously lost his gears. And at Goodwood, Rob Gravitt in the pure white, unsponsored Sierra is out on his own. A new fastest lap, 1 minute 21.5, 104 miles an hour, and Jerry Marnie comes into the pits in the Aquati BMW. Don't bother, he says to his mechanics through the windscreen, I am out. And at the chicane, Luby is attacking Sidna for second in the two-litre class. Kurt is a very busy man today. He is commuting by plane to drive Vauxhall Lotus single-seaters at Silverstone and the BMW here at Thruxton. And now he's chasing his team leader, Frank Sidner, the champion from two years ago, and at the chicane, Gravit, Harvey, Andy Rouse is dropping well back now. And Rob Gravitt is coming up to lap one of the BMWs. He is looking absolutely invulnerable, with the knowledge from practice that his tyres will easily last the 20 racing laps, which is clearly more than the others will. So, Gravitt goes through and laps the BMW. Tim Harvey closing up now to do the same thing, but the gap remains almost constant. Now, we're in car with Harvey. That's Gravitt ahead in the white Sierra. And Tim, running second, only seems to have one problem, and it's called Rob Gravitt. Chicane, battle for fourth, Hathaway, Bristow, Newman, and Newman's lost it! Newman's lost it! Bang! Straight into the new pit ball. Well, poor Mike Newman, second earlier on this year. Here's a replay. Now, was there contact? I don't think so, but Lawrence Bristow's on full left lock. And that is it for poor Mike Newman. Slams into the wall, back across the track. Stops on the tarmac, they'll need to get the car out of the way quickly there. But Mike, fortunately, looks to be perfectly OK. End of the lap, Rod Gravitt and Mike Smith and team manager, the bearded Rob Vickery, are clearly delighted the gap is being maintained. And look at this, John Cleland in the Vauxhall Cavalier, the British champion in the Vauxhall Astra last year, beating the previously unconquerable BMW M3s. Passes Ray Arms in the Honda Civic 1600, Frank Sittner and Kurt Luby doing the same thing, and John Cleland has created a new two-litre lap record. One minute, 24.3 seconds, here he is, 100.7 miles an hour. A really terrific drive. Luby passes arms, the Honda Civic dropping back. It's got 400 less cc's than the two-litre cars in front of it, so that's hardly surprising. But there's a two-litre engine coming for the Honda. And at the complex, there's Baird and Whale, and there's a spin, there's contact, there's a spin. Both off the course, Nick Whale continues. Well, he's got away well, but Baird has stopped. He's rejoining, he's lost two places already. And there's Tim Harvey, second in the race, coming up to lap him. And ahead of him, Rod Gravitt, pacing himself beautifully to maintain the gap. And here's a replay, Baird and Whale. Now, opinions will differ, but that looked like Baird's corner to me. But Whale was the one who came out best. And now, Jeff Allen is really charging, fourth in class, behind Cleland in the Vauxhall, and the BMWs of Sittner and Luby. And Andy Rouse is in trouble. That's number one. He's lost contact with the leaders long ago. Now he's fighting to stop Graham Hathaway, number 14, getting third place, and it looks to me as though Hathaway's going to do it. They come through and complete the lap. Hathaway on the inside. He passes Andy Rouse. We're in car. I bet Andy's problem is tyres. He didn't expect them to last at race speed, and they clearly aren't doing so. So now he's driving for points. He's on 10 for fourth place at the moment. But there's Lawrence Bristow behind him, and he's coming up fast. So, this is a great race for Graham Hathaway, the ex-British Rally Cross champion. It's his first drive in the ex-Mike Smith 1989 Trackstar Sierra Cosworth. 
And here's ex-British champion Jeff Allen, the man who used to drive the mighty Rover V8s. He's fairly chucking the BMW round Thruxton. Third position, fourth position, fifth position. Hathaway, Rouse, Bristow. And now Bristow's going for it. Rouse drifts out wide, loses the place to Lawrence Bristow. Down to fifth position goes Andy Rouse as he drives down towards the chicane. So now the tyre race order is Yokohama, Dunlop, Dunlop, Dunlop and Pirelli. And Andy is now on only eight points. Into the chicane. There's Rouse. And they go through to complete a lap. And that's obviously a surprise for his mechanics. They were expecting him to come in for new tyres. But on, he's trying to keep touch with Bristow, hoping someone will strike trouble ahead. Complex, Hathaway third. Number 10, Bristow fourth. Andy Rouse fifth, being caught by Sean Walker in sixth place. There's Rouse, look for Walker. There he is in the background. Well, not a good race for the championship leader, Andy Rouse. Down to the chicane in the Virgin White Sierra, Rob Gravitt leads. Closing up to lap, Mark Hales's unique Mitsubishi Starion. And Mark is on Firestone tyres, so that's four different makes. Here's Gravitt coming up to lap him. Meantime, in car with Andy Rouse, and he's coming into the pits. Now, this looks like tyre changing time at last, and it is. Up goes the car on its pneumatic jacks, on go the pneumatic tyre wrenches, off come the old tyres and wheels, on go the new ones. Andy gesticulating from inside the car, down it goes, back onto the track again. Andy punches the accelerator, and out goes the Ford Sierra Cosworth. He rejoins in 11th position, out of the points. And he was leading the championship. And that is what heat, 600 horsepower and Thruxton can do to the wrong compound. Blister the tread and ruin the grip. Last lap, shouts Mike Smith to the unhearing Rob Gravitt. There he is, on his victorious way. The right car, the right tyres, the right driver. But without sponsorship, we may sadly be seeing the last of the talented Rob for this year. And this is the battle for third. Hathaway, Bristow and Walker. Hathaway, another fine driver who's grossly underfunded. His colour scheme looks like an ordinary road car. Look at it. Plain red and white, number 14. Ford Sierra Cosworth, and it's a Ford Sierra Cosworth behind him, that of Lawrence Bristow. He hasn't got a sponsorship problem. Now, Bristow is attacking, and Hales is off. Mark Hales off in the Mitsubishi, as out of Brooklands come Hathaway third, Bristow fourth, Walker fifth. And Bristow's going for it now. This is his last chance. There's Gravit, almost home ahead of Harvey. But he's absolutely safe. He's almost home, and Mike Smith bursts a blood vessel with delight as teammate Rob Gravit wins at Thruxton. Chicane, third, Hathaway, fourth, Bristow, fifth, Walker. Can there be a change in the closing yards of the race? The answer is no. It's Hathaway in third position. John Cleland's superb Vauxhall Cavalier is going to handsomely beat the previously unbeatable BMW M3s to win the two-litre class. Ahead of Frank Sittner, Kurt Luby and Jeff Allen. And there they are, on their way down to Brooklands for the last time. And Jeff Allen can be proud of a fine recovery from a rotten start. So it's just into the chicane now, and, there, and there's a crash, collision. Luby hits Sittner, both BMW spin. Jeff Allen goes through into second place. Sittner and Luby recover, but it is too late. And there is Andy Rouse finishing 10th for one point.
and the last corner has a dramatic effect on the result and on this occasion the fault lies with the over enthusiastic Kurt Luby whose mistake allowed Jeff Allam an unlikely second in class the two litre formula order Cleland Allam Sittner but at the front of the field Rob Gravitt from Harvey and Hathaway had proved his point to whatever potential sponsor may have been watching now we needed some funds to run the car for another race I'm pleased. Yeah, I'm pleased. I think we deserve it, to be honest with you. Thank you. But, uh, yeah, I'm pleased. Very pleased. No doubting that. Gravit claims third in the overall championship. Frank Sittner, despite his last corner mugging, takes over the championship lead from Andy Rouse, whose tyre problems were even greater. And with Gravit and Cleland winning their classes with great authority, the championship looks